think I'll get us started. Um, as you know, this is the third in a four-part series about God is great. When we were putting this together, we realized that was a common theme, although we didn't ask people to speak about how God is great. They just came up with these topics that all <laughs> dealt with the fact that God is great. Uh, next week is Jake, and he's on Thursday uh, at 6.30, so a week from tomorrow, Thursday night. Um, Jenny's story is a, is called the story. I mean, Jenny's presentation is called The Story's Not Over. Uh, I've read it, um, and she's not going to read it to us. It'll be just awesome. And as usual, we want everybody to interrupt and ask questions. If you have slow video connections, one thing I've learned recently is if some of us turn off our videos, then it might help those who are having slow connections. Another thing is what most people do is mute themselves unless they have a question. We certainly don't require that. And in fact, if you're on mute, you might be inclined not to say anything because it's too much trouble to unmute yourself. So if that's the situation, leave your mute off. If we have technical problems and things start uh, things start squealing in the background, just we'll, we'll ask you to uh, mute yourself. Um, I think everybody here knows Jenny, and that's one reason why so many people are on tonight. But in case you don't, she's married to John. Um, she's got one son and then Parks is in heaven. Um, her other son, Matthew, is a senior at Blakewood High School. He plays golf. Jenny and John have been going to Trinity since uh, 2000, so she's been there for 20 years. She's a behavioral health case manager, and her official name title ends with LISW-CP-something that I can't remember. And I know that the LISW means she's a licensed independent social worker, which is a big deal. And then she's done clinical practice, and Pam, my wife, Pamela, um, has those same designations, and that's a whole lot of time and a whole lot of um, um, work studying under a licensed independent social worker who's already got a CP designation. It's a tremendous investment, but uh, she's a behavior health case manager at Blue Cross. She hopes to retire in three years, one month, and 14 days. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she's going to stop working at that point. She's like no. me loves reading and writing and she can't stand arithmetic and computers. Jenny, the way I call that is um, I'm into words and sentences and paragraphs, but I'm not into numbers and arithmetic and spreadsheets. And That's just, true. That, is, that summarizes it perfect. Yep, yep. And if you want to teach me something to send a spreadsheet, just write me a memo about it. Yeah. Don't hand me your spreadsheet. Um, yeah. She, let's see. She was, she, I asked her to tell me, tell us one thing about herself that people might not know. She went to Greece, which is where my wife, Pamela, wants to go really, really badly. And while she was on Mykonos, she almost missed her cruise ship because she was drinking tequila with her friends outside a cafe and she lost track of time. That's, that's a wonderful story. And I bet a few of you knew that, but I'm so glad she shared it with me. Well, I would so, go with you next time you have a trip. But, a, yeah, that was 30 uh, years ago. Let's all go to Greece with Jenny and John next time. So, Lynn Grimes, this is really um, your your series here. Have I left anything off, Lynn? And do you want to add anything? You're on mute, Lynn. Unmute. No, I can't add anything to that. I just enjoy going to Jenny's Sunday school classes. She does the women's growing in faith Sunday school classes, which which is a big hit with me. And Jenny, you're working on a designation related to the church. Tell us about that. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to become a lay servant, um, which I didn't find out about until about a year ago. I think Betty is doing this too. Um, and actually our training is the first um, weekend in November. Um, but basically um, I want to get involved with um, ministry type, activities or facilitation, um, but not go back to school. That's, I guess, how I would put it. I think you'll end up doing the equivalent of school. I've got a sister-in-law who got that certification and oh, really? a lot of work. Then she, and then she did go on to a seminary and got some kind of degree from the seminary. So, um, yeah. man, I'm glad to know study is not complete. I see Betty Hillier has, a jo has joined us and Michelle Dobson. So uh, welcome. So uh, as I said before, please feel free to um, 
my mother's calling me, y'all. Please feel free to um, to interrupt Jenny. Is that okay for me to say? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, and if you want to ask questions or tell a story that's related to something that she's talking about. As you know, these are always better when we have people uh, participating. Yes, definitely. All uh, right. Correct. Well, as Bob said, I, and, I, and I just said the story is not over. And what's interesting, and this is kind of a God thing, but in our devotions and in several things that have kind of come at me in the last couple of weeks, um, this has kind of come up. Um, stories have been written down for thousands of years. We know this. Um, Psalm 107 starts, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Um, the story that the the story that Bob was telling you about the Greek Isles, when I was in college, when I was a junior in college, I was able to get six hours credit um, by talking my parents into letting me go to um, Europe uh, with the English department, even though that was not my major. Um, and what made me think of it is if you could ask that 20 year old girl, and this was us, I went in the attic and got a picture to show you guys, that's me on the end. And that's some Greek guy we don't even know who we're just socializing with. But anyway, if you could ask, if we could go back in time and you could ask that 20 year old having fun on the Greek Isles, what she wanted her story or her life to be. First of all, I probably would have, if you pressed me to say something, I probably would have said, I want to marry a wealthy frat boy. You know, I want to live in the suburbs with 2.5 kids, a yellow lab or two, you know, be a stay at home mom. Right. Okay. Um, oh yeah. And with a nanny. Okay. I mean, be a stay at home mom and have a nanny. So, but, but honestly, when I was 20 years old, 31 years ago, I wouldn't have known what I wanted. Look at this. I wouldn't have known what I wanted to do, okay? Um, and what I wanted to ask you is, if, if you feel comfortable or if you feel comfortable sharing, think back to when you were 20 years old. I want you to really think back to when you were 20 years old. What, did you know what you wanted? Has your life turned out very different from now? And Michelle Dobson, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about you for a second. Beautiful Michelle. When I went to her husband's funeral, that picture on the front of the, um, of the, the bulletin for his funeral was just beautiful, okay? She, they were just young and in love and... Does anybody feel comfortable sharing what, go back when you were 20? Anybody? What did you think your life would be? Did you know what hope was? All right, guys, y'all gonna have All to right, talk. I'll volunteer. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> I'll pay you later. Uh, well, okay, so I can tell you that my life is not at all what I thought it would be. Okay. When I was 20, I was going to be a veterinarian. I was going to be married. I was going to have children. I was going to live out in the country with a bunch of livestock. And I don't know. I was going to be, I mean, I was going to be working. I was going to be a mom. I was going to be all these things. None, none of which are true. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, Allison. Anybody else? Hey, when, I, when I was 20, I had just graduated um, with an associate's degree in journalism, and I had already been accepted to Michigan State to move from York to Michigan to finish my, to get my bachelor's degree. Um, and I, you know, I thought I was going to be the next Bob Woodward or something, but, um, <laughs> but that seems like an awful long time ago and, and none of that. I did go to Michigan, but none of that panned out. <laughs> it's 
crazy how things work out. You probably would have been a really good national I thought, journalist. I thought I was going to be the governor. <laughs> see, <laughs> I could see that. I could so see that. You still that that's still possible. Oh, that's still time. possible. What about President of the United States? I'm just kidding. Let's not go there. <laughs> I will run for the hills. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, because I can't see everybody on my little pad. Okay, if you, if you want to just just interrupt me seriously, because like I said, I can't see everybody. Um, oh my goodness, how different things work out from the way we thought. I, you know, it's just crazy. Um, I may have never worked for DSS. Some of y'all know I investigated abuse, uh, reports of abuse and neglect for DSS. That was one of my first jobs out of school. I think I made like $13,500 a year. Um, I would have never worked hard jobs. I would have never met the wonderful friends I did. I would have, I mean, if y'all could, if I could just share with you some of the guys I dated, okay? I mean, I've got some crazy stories and we're not even gonna go there because this is a church presentation. <laughs> but, you know, I, I would have never married John. You know, by the time I met John, I was, um, I was 29, I think when we got married. And y'all know, a lot of y'all have heard me um, throw John under the bus, you know, that's us. <laughs> Okay, right there. Look how young they look right there. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I don't have the fancy presentation that Lynn and, um, and Mike had. But, you know, I would have never had Parks. I would have never had Matthew. Um, you know, I, I, my friend, a lot of my friends got married and I, and, and you know how it is, you know, in our society, everybody's asking you, oh, you know, you feel like you've just got to get married. And I just want to tell young people, no, you know, look, life is so much more than that. But I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for John. And y'all know, if you've heard me do children's moments in the 845 service several years ago, you know, I don't hesitate to throw them under the bus, but I honestly don't know what, what I would do without him, you know? And I think all, I think most of you on the call know that we lost Parks um, a little over five years ago. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute, but um, what a blessing and what a blessing Matthew has been. He can be a little bit delinquent sometimes, but he's, he's got a great heart. He's a great kid. Um, so if I could write, if I could write my own story, if I could just write my own story, Parks would have never gotten sick. Okay. Um, he would, he would have never gotten sick. He would have never passed away five months later. Um, Matthew would not have had to go through high school without his brother, okay? Um, but another thing that you guys kind of may not know, of, know about me is, um, is we went through a lot um, before the whole virus attacked his heart, January 2015. If you could back up even a little further, maybe about three years, Prior to that, um, one day we're sitting in the den. I think, I think Parks was probably about 11 years old. I, I can't remember exactly, but we're sitting in the den and John had taken Matthew to a concert in Five Points. And, you know, at that point, the boys are giving themselves a bath. Um, you know, yeah, I never looked at his feet. We were in, I think he was in a, um, a baseball tournament that weekend. And he gets out of the bath or the shower and he comes in and he's sitting on our L-shaped sofa. And I looked over at his, his foot that didn't have a sock on it. And I thought, that doesn't look right. And so <clears throat> it really bothered me and bothered me. I showed it to John, you know, when he got home, he's like, Jimmy, I don't know, but yeah, no, it doesn't really look right. So not to go into a long story, but that led to um, a lot of specialists. We, um, one of the other mothers was a doctor who was there at the baseball tournament that day, that next day. And I just asked her, I said, Amy, I said, I need y'all to look at Matthew's, I mean, Park's foot. And she looked and she said, Jenny, I'm going to suggest that y'all go to Mark Locke, who is a um, pediatric orthopedist. He's kind of well-known in Columbia. 
she said, I'm going to suggest that you get an appointment with him. And I'm like, okay, okay. Well, that led to Mark Locke, who actually diagnosed him correctly day one, okay, which is kind of amazing to me. But Mark, Mark Locke said, Jenny, I think he has Charcot Marie Tooth. Now, you probably never heard of that, okay? But Charcot Marie Tooth, I know you've heard of Lou Gehrig's disease, okay? ALS. Charcot Marie Tooth is actually related. They are, they are brother and sister diagnosis. Charcot Marie Tooth, whereas ALS is a nervous, your central nervous system disorder, Charcot Marie Tooth is a peripheral nerves. If you had looked at Park's feet, he had an extremely high arch and his toes curled upwards, okay? I don't have a picture of it, but it, but it was very much, you could tell it was not right. Um, his hands, if you look at my hand, I have padding on my hand. He had no padding, okay? Because something was wrong with the nerves that were getting to his peripheral or his um, extremities, his, his arms and his legs to those muscles. And obviously if it wasn't, you know, doing well, by the time it got to his hands or his feet, um, you know, it really affected it. So we went to Mark, and of course, if you're a parent, you know that denial is a huge thing. So I'm like, this, this, you know, I mean, he plays baseball, plays football, plays golf, you know. Uh. So we ended up going to a neurologist who did genetic testing which sometimes that's inconclusive whether, and then we went to Duke, okay? And the Duke orthopedist spent an hour with us. And sure enough, he said, I believe this is what it is. And there's, there was just the thing about this disorder with ALS, you know, it's going to go pretty quick. Um, people deteriorate pretty quickly with that. With CMT, there's, it's hard to tell. Um, you could have kids that end up in a wheelchair. You could have people that never end up in a wheelchair. Um, there's just no telling. But it was devastating, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, I'll never forget driving back from Duke. And I was sitting in the back seat, and John and Parks are in the front. And, you know, we've just gotten this horrible news, okay? And I know it's going to affect Parks for the rest of his life. And I'm sitting with my sunglasses on, tears, because I didn't want them to see me crying, you know. So if you want to fast forward a little while, um, you, you, some of you may have heard my testimony in church. But if you did, you know that, that Parks on, um, I think it was January 4th, 2015. He was airlifted to MUSC. He did get better. Um, the reason I bring this up, the reason I even bring up what we went through before we lost him is because I, you know, in hindsight's always 2020, but when I look back six years or five years ago, what I wonder is, you know, would Parks have ended up in a wheelchair? Would, um, you know, he was already walking funny before the myocarditis even hit him. Um, you know, what would have happened? I don't know. Um, I certainly would have changed the story, okay? If, if as a mother, I could write the story, I would have written it different, okay? And I think as parents, you can relate to me that we like to be in control. And there's some things we just don't have control over. Um, some parts of our story, we know why it happened the way it did. Okay. Some parts of our story, we know why it happened. You know, let me tell you right here. I can look back at some of the guys I dated. And let me tell you, I make fun of John and all his cousins, okay, but, but I know why I married him, okay, 
I know why it didn't work out with them. And I was devastated at the time. Okay. Think back to your first love. Think back to your first heartbreak. I was devastated. Okay. But now I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, some parts of our story we know. Why did I not marry that crazy guy? Why did I, why did I have to work certain jobs? I mean, I looked up my social security the other day. I don't know if y'all know this, but you can look it up online. You can register online. I literally started working when I was 15. Now, some of you may have started before then, but my first job, I think I made like 400 and something dollars, maybe. I was 15 years old. Um, some things you know why they happen, but some things you just don't, you know? Um, can you see my t-shirt? Life Fest 1999. So when John and I started at Trinity, it was the year 2000, um, and they were selling these t-shirts um, for Blythe Fest. Um, some of you, Melanie, I know you know what I'm talking about with Blythe Fest, okay? Um, they had a band on Friday nights. I mean, it was huge. Um, and I wore this shirt. I got it out of the closet just so I could show y'all. But I think back to the, the 20 years that I've been at Trinity, I think back to you all, to the friends that I've, I mean, uh, Lord have mercy. When all of this happened with Parks, what would I have done without all of you? I can't even, um, I don't even want to think about that. I, Trinity helped shape my three boys. Yeah, I'm going to include John as one of my boys. Trinity helped shape me. It helped shape my faith. And I am so far from where I need to be, but I'm just so thankful. Did somebody want to say anything? I thought I heard somebody. Mm. So I love, I don't know if any, most of you probably know this verse, but in First Chronicles um, chapter 17, um, David has been given, I think Nathan is, and Mike can correct me because he's the guru in the Bible, but um, I think Nathan informs King David of, of what's going to happen. His, his um, oh, I don't know how to say it, destiny, his um, legacy. Um, and I love, I love the prayer. And I'm not going to read the whole prayer. You can go to First Chronicles 17 and look it up. But, he, but David, and I just picture him on his knees, prostate, or, or on his knees praying with his, with looking up. I could just see him. Um, who am I, Lord God? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? Don't you love that? I encourage you to read the entire prayer um, because it is really good. It's very specific to him and his situation, but, but you can read it and kind of change the words in your own mind and read it for your own life. Um, it's wonderful. Here's the thing. When it comes to our stories, some things remain a mystery and we'll never know why, okay? And we'd want to, we would have written it different, okay? And I'm not talking about a mystery in the usual day-to-day -day sense that we use it. I'm, I'm not talking about that kind of mystery here because I love a good mystery novel. I love it. I love reading them. Sometimes I'll even flip to the end to see what happens, at least briefly, which we shouldn't do. But yeah, but the mystery that I'm talking about I want to call it a divine mystery. I want to call it a divine mystery. Um, some mysteries are just not going to be solved. And, and when you really think about it, um, if you can step outside of your grief and your pain, um, you know, some mysteries we shouldn't solve. We shouldn't. Because we wouldn't need God. If we were in control, we wouldn't need God. If I knew the ending already, then I don't need to have hope and I don't need to have grace. 
So Job, Job never, I don't think, now y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be wrong about this, but I don't think Job ever found out the why from God, okay? And somebody chime in and correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I don't think God ever found out the why. I mean, Job ever found out the why from God. And in chapter 42, I just want to read this. In chapter 42, verse 1 through 3, when Job realizes, when God, and God, before this verse, God had relayed to Job how great he is. And some of it, and I don't have it written down, but it's, it's like, you know, did you hang the sun in the sky? Did you create the, the mountains and the valleys, you know, this kind of thing. And so Job's response in chapter 42, verse one through three, he replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You ask, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. As I sit here right now, I don't know. I don't know why God took parks. I don't know why I only had 15 years with him. I don't know. But if there's one thing I do know, it's that God knows what he's doing. If you look at this, I don't have a rug, okay, to show you. But if you look at this, you can't really tell what that is, right? There's all these, it's, it's, just, it's just random. It looks like random stitches, okay? It looks like random stitches. It's, it's no real. But if you turn it over, if you turn it over. Oh, yeah. You know? And I, I almost feel like maybe that's a little bit how life, this gift of life that we have is. You know, we, we just see a stitch here, or maybe this is a stitch there. You know, it could be that Parks would, that, that the, the CMT, that the neurological disorder, that that would have, you know, he, if you knew Parks, you knew he loved golf, okay? I mean, he played baseball and he loved that and football. But I mean, he was, he would be out in the sleet Okay, practicing golf. You know, maybe God said, Look, I'm going to take him before this gets bad. You know, maybe he wouldn't be able to deal with this. Here's the thing about the gift of life and the, and, and the mystery it's more than just a story. It's more than just a story. It's, it's probably it's something I, I don't even know that I have a word for it. This mystery, this gift of life. You know, um, I don't know when I'm going to take my last, last breath. You know, Carl and Sue, I don't know when you're going to take your last breath, okay? Don and Betty, I don't know. I hope to goodness it's not anytime soon, okay? But we don't know. We don't know when we're going to breathe our last breath. But here's the thing. The story's not over. The story's not over. This, this, what we're living right now is just such a small piece. And there's got to be that divine mystery. It's got to be a part of it. You know, why do some people suffer from chronic grief? I mean, chronic pain. Why do some people, why did Jake get cancer? What, I mean, he is one, he is a godly person, a, a man after God's heart. Why, why would you, and, and maybe he'll talk about this next week, okay? Why COVID? What in the world? Come on, I want to see your facial expressions change with that. Why are we going through this? What? I don't know, okay? I don't know why some people get cancer. I don't know why some people take their last breath before I feel like they should, okay? I do not know, but here's the thing. I've got to stay plugged into the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm telling you right now, these months of COVID have not been easy. 
And I know I speak, I'm singing to the choir, Melanie. I'm singing to the choir right now. And I see you nodding. These have been hard. It's hard not getting with my church. It is hard. This is, come on, you know? But here's the thing. Here's what we see, okay? There's what we see right there. That's what we see. But there's something beautiful on the other side. This is such a short time. And you know, love God, love our neighbor. You know, I've got, I've got to stay strong. I've got to stay plugged into the Holy Spirit. Because here's the thing, okay? There's a lot of negative out there. I, I, I don't even want to talk about last night. Okay. I don't even want to talk about it. I have got to stay plugged in to the power source, to the Holy Spirit, because I've got to filter everything through my faith. All right. Amen. I have got to filter everything through my faith. Okay. I cannot, you will not see me post anything political on Facebook. Okay, I'm not going to do it. For those of you that do, that's okay. great and that's fine. But we have got to make our relationship with God, our relationship with our Savior, we have got to be plugged into the Holy Spirit. I want a fresh breath, okay? I want a fresh breath at Trinity. I want a fresh breath in our community. I want a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit to be over our nation. Okay. And I don't have any control over whether, you know, the story, I, I don't have control over the story. Okay. But I do have control over me staying plugged into the Holy Spirit and staying positive and, and praying and getting involved in small groups. Okay. And it, there's so many good things. There's so many good people. And I think we've got to get fired up, okay? Because the story is not over. The story's not over. I'm still breathing right now. And the story's not over. And I thank our God, our glorious God, that I wasn't allowed to write it. <laughs> because it's going to be beautiful. Mm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, glorious God, you are the author and the creator of life. Lord, this precious gift. Heavenly Father, we can get so caught up in our day, in negative people, people that are hurting, Lord, and we can stray from you, Lord. We can get unplugged. But Lord, I want my light to shine. I want my lamp. I don't want it under a bushel, Lord, and I want it plugged into the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want Trinity to be a vibrant church, Lord, an active church. I want, I want everyone to know you, Lord, and to call you their Savior. Lord, I thank God that you gave me this opportunity to talk. And I ask that you bless all of us in the weeks to come because the story is not over and you are so great. Holy and gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now comments. I didn't mean to pray there before we had comments, but I was just feeling it. So. Amen. Oh, and for those of y'all that haven't seen Parks, I had a picture of him. Right there. <laughs> I wish I had Lynn and Mike's presentation, but anyway. Okay, somebody speak. Today, Are you today, feeling it? Is anybody feeling it? I'm, I've got a question. Okay. Um, just before lunch today, somebody came into my office and mentioned somebody who lived on the border between England and Scotland. <clears throat> and I immediately thought about Gordon. And I'm still mad at God for taking yeah. Gordon. And he was older than I am. He'd had a older than I am. He'd had a good life, but man, so I know that. But that being mad at God is 
is having a relationship with God, being in touch with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Man, it's been a long time, and and I wasn't married to the guy. I only really saw him twice a week. Man, he was one of my favorite people in the whole world. I'm still yes. mad at God. So talk about anger as part of, of what you feel. And I mean, God, right day. Um, where does anger fit in all this? Oh, I've I've had I've had a lot I've had a lot of anger, a lot of anger. I mean, I think if you heard my and I didn't go into the whole story, but I mean, I would be on my knees, tears roll, you know, just shaking my fist, saying, "Lord, why, why would you take a great kid like Parks?" You know. Gordon. I mean, Gordon, I remember volunteering at vacation Bible school with Gordon. Oh my God. He was wonderful. He was wonderful. Uh, You know, we've lost some beautiful saints and, and I think God can handle our anger. I think he can handle it. And I think he gave us that emotion. He gave it to us. Anger, anger, although we don't want to take it too far, you know, back in the day it was useful when we had to run from animals and things like that or i don't know (laughs) yeah somebody else might have a better answer than that but i don't and jenny i you know i'm a little closer to your story because of Mm -hmm. my nephew Um, my sister's oldest son and parks were very best friends growing up so i've lived it with her but i think would we have parks place if God hadn't decided he needed park. Oh, good point. Melanie, I didn't even think about that. And that one just thing I wanted me. to say that I didn't say, and then I'll let you finish. Every time as a mother, every time I hear them say park's place, I wish you could feel what it feels like in my heart. So, yeah, Thank you, Melanie. We do feel it through you. Absolutely. Um, we feel it through you. So that that's one thing that um that we've we've a lot of us have talked about during this whole pandemic situation and the fact that we were able to assemble back as a church maybe quicker than some other folks right. is because we have that space. Right. Mm-hmm. So you were talking about Job and not sure exactly why Job was stricken the way that he was stricken or what happened and this, that or the other. That has been a discussion that we've had so many times about why was Parks taken? Maybe Parks was taken so that we as Trinity can have a place to worship and celebrate our God. And as we continue now to build with this new beginning and the fresh beginning that you were talking about earlier, Jenny, I mean, Lauren and I were sitting here going, amen. I mean, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We would not have that area, that space, so the fact that his life is a complete blessing to so many people. And think about this. As we sit on Sunday morning and that word is coming out over those speakers, we have no idea how many people are hearing what that word is. Not just the people that are sitting there in the grass, but how, how many people are hearing that as they drive by or in the hotel next door okay. or in the vet office next mm-hmm. door. There was a vet tech out walking dogs a couple of Sundays ago, and she was out there walking dogs a lot longer than she needed to be walking dogs. <laughs> um, oh. She was listening to what was being said at that church and what was being said at that service. The Holy Spirit <sighs> is moving, and it's right, moving right. here because we have Park's Place. So we thank, we thank you. And we thank Parks for what he has given us. Yes. And also, when you think of the children who are in the e-learning program, and now that we are starting to move back indoors as a church, I believe the picnic tables will be put back in there. And and 35 kids may be eating their lunch out there and have a place that they can be outdoors and run around and enjoy. They may not know the name Parks Place, but they know that picnic shelter and where they've been. And that's so beautiful to see his legacy carried on in the lives of little ones who are being nurtured and taught because of the outreach of our congregation. Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you, Betty. Yes, Jake. Oh, my goodness. Jake, I can't wait to hear you talk next week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Does anybody else have anything? I I just so appreciate y'all listening. Um, 
it, you know, there's some things that I, you know, I haven't really talked a whole lot about and that. And that's one thing that, you know, kind of everything after it kind of overshadowed, you know, and, um, and you may not know this either, but, um, parts collapsed. John was at the ball field with Matthew and parts collapsed and I had to give him CPR for, um, what felt like forever. <laughs> and so, yeah. 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 I just want to go back. Divine mystery. What we're talking about anger. And I know that Donna always tells people anger turned inward is depression. Mm -hmm. So the expression of anger is really a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. And why hide it from God when he knows your inner heart anyway? If you're, you're, you know, oh, I don't want to be angry because at God, blah, blah, blah. He already knows that. So, you know, you're only damaging your own good health by not expressing some of the anger and, and dealing with it that way. Right. In early church theology and in many present day thinkers, anger is always pictured as sinful. You're not what you want to be. You're not thinking the way you should be. You're wrong. You're bad. And anger is listed in the seven deadly sins. But Modern day thinking, and I think better theology, recognizes that anger can be a healthy impetus for us to do things about things that are wrong. And, Very good uh, point. If we don't have the anger, then we'll just accept things and not do anything about the racism, the, all kinds of other problems that exist. Mm -hmm. But anger is a gift of God to spur us on to do something about the things that are not the way they should be. I think that's a much better understanding of the biblical teaching. Don, I'm glad you were on this call, seriously, because I was struggling. I'm like, well, anger, you know, God gave us this emotion, but you're right. Um, and, and I hate to say this, you know, um, but back when I worked for DSS, um, you know, unfortunately, Nothing, nothing changed until something bad happened to a child, until a child, a child died. I, I mean, that's crazy, but, you know, it, it's how it was. People just didn't care unless, and then they get, and then they got angry at us. Well, get angry at DSS, go ahead, but, you know, make some change, make some social change here, you know? Maybe what we need is some grassroots kind of organization at our church, you know, which I think we do well. I do. I really do. I think we're a social work kind of, you know, outreach church. But anyway. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jenny. Jenny. There is a Lauren Wells. Now we yeah. see. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. Okay, without giving away the punchline, um, tell us 20 seconds about what you're going to talk to us about next Thursday. At six. Yeah, so, so um, we'll, be, we'll be talking about kind of some of the same things, actually, how um, a cancer diagnosis at 42 completely knocked me off my – on my knees and off my socks, out of my socks, I guess. And um, how that has kind of changed my perspective in terms of the way that I look at my place and my family's place in the church and what we need to do um, moving forward. So um, that's, uh, that's what we'll be talking about. And um, some of the same things I get, I think that Jenny talked about tonight, we'll, we'll cover next week as well. Good, good, well, thank you. All right. Well, thanks everybody again. And, and Lynn, do you have any closing comments? Jenny, you kept talking about the Holy Spirit in your presentation. And as, as you guys know, uh, our grandchildren, Caroline and Duncan, go to St. John Newman Catholic School. Well, today was Mass Day. And the second grade, which is where Caroline is, second grade had the prayer service afterwards. And all the second graders had a little line. Well, Caroline's line was, I'm paraphrasing here, was something like, we need our parents uh, when we're young, but as we grow older, we need the Holy Spirit more and more. The more we, the older we get, the more we need the Holy Spirit. 
So uh, I thought that was. Amen. Please. Amen. Amen. Just for the record, there's no answer to the question why. There's no answer to that. God's ways are not our ways. His ways are past finding out. And Jesus on the cross asked the question why and didn't seem to have an answer. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So there's no answer to that question, or that statement. No logical answer to what happens. That's a true mystery. That's what a mystery really is. But doesn't that give us the chance to know God and to trust him more when we don't know why? Very good point, Brenda. That is a very good point. Why would we, if we knew why, if we were in control of the story, why would we have to trust? Why we, why we have to have faith? Yeah. So true. So true. Yeah. All right, well, I can't wait to hear Jake. And um, Bob, do you have anything else? I think that's, I think that's it. Um, if that's it for everybody, I know you did a closing prayer, but it was here on the premature side. And I'm wondering I if did. Joe, if I can hit you by surprise and ask you to close us with a prayer. What do you think, Joey, or is this just grossly unfair to ask you to, pre to, uh, to pray? <laughs> no, sir, I can do. I can definitely do that for you. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, giver of love, giver of grace, we thank you for bringing us together tonight. We thank you for our sister Jenny and her, her spirit-filled, hope-filled words. Through Jenny today, we know, we know that you are with us, that you are guiding us each and every day. We know that it's okay to be angry. We know that you can handle our anger and any other thing that we bring to you. Heavenly Father, now we just ask that your spirit fill us as we go forth from this place. Watch with us. Walk with us. Watch over us. Be with us and all your magnificent and mysterious ways that we just can't fathom. When we ask the question, why, let us remember that, that you are with us and that you will be with us and that one day we will see you and those quiet questions, they're not going to matter anymore. Heavenly Father, let your spirit reign in this place as your kingdom continues to build each and every day. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jenny. Thank y'all. Okay, Bless I guess I'm going to sign off. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jenny. Bye. Bye, y'all.